Hello, it's a great day for optimal health. Today we're going to change things up a little bit and talk about whole food vitamins, but do a little bit of work here on our whiteboard. There's been a lot of things happen in our industry and a lot of understandings from the research that everyone pretty much knows now that we need to supplement back into our diet good vitamins. In fact, 97% of the population, according to the most recent research study, shows we're deficient in certain vitamins, if not all of them, a little bit. And in fact, there was a study done just in 2010 where they took a large group of people and they measured their blood work and the nutrients that were in them. And they found out that they needed to take in over 27,000 calories a day in order to reach the recommended daily allowance of vitamins in the body. So you'd have to consume that many calories. Well, the average American only consumes around 2,000 calories a day. That's crazy. You'd actually just blow up with the amount of calories you'd need to ensure that you got all the vitamins that you needed each day. Well, we know that when there's a deficiency in certain vitamins that it can cause problems and B12 leads to a deficiency and it can lead to problems with cognitive uh, thoughts and functioning in the brain and later on to Alzheimer's and dementia. We know that vitamin C helps with the immune system. Vitamin D is important for the bones and for hormones and so on. So we know that these little deficiencies as research shows can cause quite a big problem. The answer, very simple take in a good vitamin formula. But therein lies the problem. Most people don't understand the difference between whole food vitamins and synthetic vitamins. And that's what we really want to address today is the difference so that you can be educated to know what you should take in when you're looking for a good vitamin supplement. Let me give you an example real quick. When we look at vitamin C, most people know vitamin C and that they've heard of ascorbic acid before. And ascorbic acid is listed as vitamin C in most formulas, but in all reality, it's just a fraction of vitamin C. In order to have a complete whole vitamin C, you must also have the rutin, the, you might have heard of bioflavonoids before, and then also something called the J and K factor. So without the ascorbic acid, rutin, bioflavonoids, and the other factors with it, we don't have a complete vitamin C. Well, so what? Well, guess what? The research is really straightforward on this. Uh, there was one study done with over 500 people, and they showed that if they took synthetic vitamin C, just the ascorbic acid, that it actually caused a buildup in the artery walls instead of reducing it. But yet then there's other studies with foods that have vitamin C in it, like cherries and oranges and so on, that actually improved the risk of heart disease and cleaned out the arteries. The difference is between having just the fraction of the vitamin C and having it from a whole food. Guess what? Have you ever thought about how they make vitamin C? Well, if on your label it says ascorbic acid, what they did is they combined corn syrup with hydrochloric acid. That combination leads to vitamin C that you buy, or most people buy in the stores today, as ascorbic acid. Do you want corn syrup mixed with hydrochloric acid that shows it actually can cause more problems than do good? Probably not. It's just about being educated. Make sure on the label it says it's from Whole Foods, has name of oranges or cherries or something that you know has vitamin C in it. It's that simple. The same holds true for all the other vitamins. Just make sure that they're whole food based. For example, vitamin E. If you look on your label, uh, vitamin E is, is known as a tocopherol, okay? And if you look on your label, many times it'll say alpha tocopherol. Well, that's only a fraction of vitamin E. We need the rest of the sorority. We need the beta tocopherol, the gamma, to, to cough raw and the delta. Without all of them, we don't make up a whole vitamin E. So although it can get a little bit technical with some of these big words and the understanding of organic chemistry, really it's very simple for us to apply. Look to vitamins that have the name of the food or that we know are whole food cultured. It's actually that simple. 
But what are the harmful effects besides maybe over the years a little buildup in the arteries from taking synthetic vitamins? Is there really that big of a risk? Let me finish off with one example. We know that B12, one of the B vitamins, is very important. In fact, there's so much new research on it for help with the dementia and Alzheimer's of helping actually slow down the progression and actually helping us to not have those problems later on in life. And so B12 is really, really big in the marketplace today. So I recommend you go and look at the B12 supplements in the health food store or different places that you might buy different vitamins. And you'll see a couple different things. Vitamin B, its name, B12, is called cobalamin. That's just the name of it. Since it's so long, they call it B12, but uh, the actual name is cobalamin. When you look at a label, it'll tell you what form of cobalamin or B12 it is. Most of the time, your product will say cyanocobalamin. What is that? Well, it's actually cobalamin, okay, combined with, believe it or not, cyanide. Now, I don't think we have to have too much of a lecture to understand how bad cyanide is for you. It actually, it works by suffocating the cells in the body. But yet, that's what form most B12 is in, cyanocobalamin. But if you don't want cyanide in the body, you need to look to the natural whole food form of cobalamin or B12, and that is methyl cobalamin. Methyl. Methyl cobalamin is the natural whole food form that's found in nature. It's a methyl group. So you have B12, the cobalamin, and it either has a cyanide molecule mixed with it or locked onto it or it has a methyl group, which is an organic group uh, that you take it and it gets in the system and helps with the cellular structure and all of the things B12 is good for, but it does it just like it comes from nature because it's methylated. That's one of the important things to understand and the wool's getting pulled over the eyes of many people out there today and we're here to set the record straight. You do need vitamins, the research is clear, but make sure they're whole food. And on the label, it should have the name of the food, or at least understand, like in the case of B12, it should say methylcobalamin, not the cyan, cyanide version of it. Once we understand these basic simple principles, it makes it easy for us to see what type of supplements we should take into our body, and stay tuned to more videos to find out actually how much you need based on the research. Have a great day.